You're listening to Season 3, Episode 7 of the Attempt Adventure Podcast, a podcast all about travel, finding adventure every day, and seeking out adventurous ways to make life more interesting. From Phnom Penh, Cambodia, actually today, James, I'm your host, Michael DeRozier, is joined, as always, by my co-host, James Barrett, uh, in Dallas, Texas. Why don't you look at that? You're somewhere new. Take a wild guess why I'm here, James. <laughs> I would guess a visa run. <laughs> yes. So that you can legally stay in your home. <laughs> Can I just vent for a minute? Here's the problem. So I'm running out of pages in my passport, right? Because during COVID, mm-hmm. every two months, I needed to get a visa extension in Thailand. I was on these emergency extensions. It took up a lot of my passport for over two years, right? So I need to get a new passport. When I came back to America last time, I tried to submit my information for the new passport. But I think because of COVID, because nobody had been traveling for so long, a lot of people's passports have expired. So the Mm -hmm. waiting list was really long. They told me it was going to be like eight weeks. I didn't have that much time when I was in America. So I couldn't do that because in which meant I couldn't get a new Thai visa either because that would take another two weeks in America. So I came back to Thailand just as a tourist. And then now I've had to go to Cambodia, submit my application for a new visa for Thailand, go back to Bangkok, go to the U.S. embassy, apply for a passport there then transfer my visa over. It's quite a headache. These are the unglamorous things about expat life that they don't tell you, James. Speaking of, I think I need to probably get my, is there a time frame from like, it can't be too early or can you just renew it, whatever? You don't need, you can, you don't need to be traveling. You could just have a passport. I mean. No, I mean like if mine expires in like 2025. I think you can probably just do it because now this again. Let me go go grab it real quick. Okay. So I found some information for you, James. It says that you can apply as early as 12 months before expiration date. Although. In the U.S., you can actually hold two passports. They allow you to hold a second passport as well. Like, for example, Hmm. if you've been to certain countries, they don't let you go to others. So, like, if you've been to Israel, for example, you need a business trip to Saudi Arabia, you have to apply for a second passport that doesn't have that stamp. There's a few countries like that, countries that are at war or at conflict that you don't want to have a stamp in it or you're not allowed to have a stamp in it. So, you can probably apply at any time. It says you just need to explain why you need a second one. So, like, for me, mine doesn't expire until November 2025. So, next November, I could... I renew it next year. Oh, cool. It says you can apply for a second U.S. passport if you need multiple visas on an ongoing basis because of frequent international travel. Uh, the State Department doesn't verify that you use it for frequent international travel, so you can just use it as a spare passport. Keep the spare and regular passport in separate places. Well, there you go. That's smart, too, because then you always have one. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I don't have mine right now. I don't have mine because it's at the Thai embassy. So, like, if anyone, if, like, a police officer stops me and is like, hey, can I see your passport? You're like, No. <laughs> My wife was applying for a name change after we got married, and the post office lost her passport, so she doesn't have a passport. Oh, no. That's terrible. And she just has to get a new one. Like, there's no recourse. You report it as stolen, and then they it's all canceled, and you just have to get a new one. There's no recourse. Yeah. The post office is either really great or really terrible. There's no in-between. I'm a massive fan in general, but that's bad. Oh, I am too. <laughs> but it's like, if you lose someone's passport, you should be required to, like, Pay for their next trip. <laughs> work on it. Or at least, like, ec- you, it's up to you to expedite a new one, but whatever. Agreed, yeah. Anyway, so I'm in Cambodia. I, I came in on Monday morning, submitted my applications, and I'm just waiting now. It'll take, like, three or four days. I'm just hanging out. Here's the problem. When I need to get a new visa, I have to go to the capital city because I have to go to the embassies, right? The Thai embassies. Mm-hmm. Which means, like, there's so much in Cambodia I would love to see. But I've been to Phnom Penh so many times. Like, I want to go to, like... Kampot or Batambang. I want to go to like the national parks in the north, but I can't because I have you to be here in Phnom Penh because that's where the embassy is. And it's annoying, James. So you're just sitting there just chilling in a hotel, I guess. And you know what? This is not a very big city Mm-mm. and I've seen it all. We had an episode about it last year and I was already complaining that I'd seen everything. I'm here for a week. I've been to the killing fields. I've been to the genocide museum. It's not even cheerful stuff to do here anyway. It's just sad. Yeah, I did go to the Royal Palace yesterday again. That was kind of fun. I mean, it was closed last time I was here because of COVID. Mm -hmm. It's open now, and uh, it's interesting. It's very much like the Thai Palace, a little bit smaller, but very similar. I mean, food's good. Yeah, the food's good. Yeah, I had a really good chicken curry yesterday. The beer is very cheap. There's way more options, and it's very much cheaper than Thailand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I took a walk along the riverfront. I don't know. I'm just kind of like deciding what am I going to do for the next week until Monday. You're just bored. You're just sitting there just like. I know. So, Michael, we're going to talk about some travel gear today, right? Mm -hmm. Stuff to make your life easier. You, however, are currently traveling in a kind of weird spot that I would argue most people aren't in. And it would be interesting for me 
to hear sort of during these times where you're not really traveling for fun. You're not really traveling to somewhere that you necessarily want to be. Yeah, they're like, are you traveling for work or pleasure? I'm like, neither. Neither. (laughs) So I'm curious if anything on this list would make your current life easier. Yeah, interesting stuff. Well, we're going to get into that in just a moment. We're going to be talking about travel gear, things like that. But first, we have a few announcements, as usual. First things first, I would like to introduce, if you haven't checked it out, our Kofi page. If you enjoy the show and you want to throw us as little as $1 a month to buy us a beer, well, it would mean a lot to us. And uh, it would help us just keep the show running and help us maybe, you know, make the show better. Like, for example, we got the new logo recently, and that was all thanks to our Kofi patrons. So thank you so much. There's no pressure to do so. We don't have any secret community or any content that we lock behind a paywall. But if you enjoy the show and you want to throw us a dollar even, um, it doesn't even have to be monthly. It could just be a dollar. We would appreciate it. Very much. And please do share the show. Uh, Word of mouth helps a lot as well. If you know someone that likes travel or adventure, or if there's a topic we've talked about that someone's enjoyed, you know, send it on over to them. And on that note, if there's something that you want us to talk about, get in touch with us that way as well. You can send listener mail to hello at attemptadventure.com. We'll be delighted to talk to you about it. Definitely. We need help with ideas, people. For sure. Michael and I, we're not idea men. No, we're not. We're not very creative. We're action takers, not decision makers. (laughs) Paid to lead, not to read. (laughs) (laughs) So we're not paid to do either. Yeah. No, I was, what was, I I was elected to, oh man, I, I I botched that. I was elected to lead, not to read. Never mind. I'm going to cut that whole part that I I ruined that. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. Well, before we get into any of that, James, did you do anything new or adventurous this week? So, sort of new, sort of this week, sort of not this week. As as we all know, when you get older, things happen. Mm-hmm. Michael, I I got glasses. Oh, did you? I'm an old man. <laughs> Is it for like near sight? For far sight? What's the deal? Far. Yeah. Was that was it? Just like a regular, like a normal checkup, and they told you, and you just well, I I hadn't been to an eye doctor in years since probably. Yeah junior elementary school and he was just like he was like basically well he said was like i don't need glasses Mm -hmm. but if you want a pair get them and you can use them for driving or whatever so that was a little disheartening (laughs) there's no shame in that i mean my brother wears glasses my parents wear glasses i'll probably need them eventually i have a pair of reading glasses that i don't really need because i I have astigmatism slight slight Mm. astigmatism very very minor but my eyesight itself is still perfect but um if i'm like especially when I was a teacher, when I was focusing and reading a lot, um, mm. I was getting headaches. And so I got them to help me when I was like grading homework and reading essays and things. Um, haven't really needed to wear them since, but uh, yeah, I know the feeling. There we go. Yeah. So for our listeners who uh, don't have video, imagine a Jordy LaForge visor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that'd be cooler though. That'd be sweet. He could see a different spectrums too. Like if there were like invisible aliens on the ship, he could like tune it to the right frequency. But like I'm looking around, I'm like, yeah, I can definitely see better. Yeah. Anyway, other than that, it's been kind of a boring, boring couple of weeks. I've been really getting ready for this move. Mm-hmm. Well, once you're there, I'm going to be challenging you to go on hikes and explore oh, yeah. your, your new area. I will take it. What about you? What have you well, done? I'm here in Cambodia, obviously. I did go to the Royal Palace uh, yesterday, and that was fun. I'll put some pictures on the website of the Cambodian Royal Palace and the Silver Pagoda Temple. It's interesting. It's really hot, so I haven't done a lot there. But um, other than that, I've um, been working really hard, and for work... I'm actually getting to combine my work with my passion for podcasting is uh, they've asked me to create a podcast to help promote the the company that I'm working with. Oh, nice. So I'm starting a um, a podcast and it probably won't interest any of our listeners because it's for people who are trying to learn English as a second language. It's called the English Speakeasy Podcast, and it's going to be myself and an English teacher from Italy named Clara Tea. We're going to be having a conversation for about 20 minutes about a topic. There will be some vocabulary provided. Yeah, and so it's it's going to be interesting. So I feel like you've made it nice. in the podcasting industry when you're up to two shows. At, you, know, you got two. Two at the same time. I mean, obviously, we've made different yeah. shows in the past, but uh, they are in extant that's now. Awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, that's okay. It's it's going to be interesting. And so um, I will put links to that as well. Again, I, I that's more for people that are trying to learn English. It's not really for our audience, but you never know. And if you really just love listening to my voice, which, uh, (laughs) I mean, I don't know. That's that's why people actually listen. Yeah, I'm sure. It's honestly been a bit boring for me as well. The last month that I've been home, I've just been getting back from being in America Mm -hmm. and kind of readjusting. And I've not done much, but I need to change that. I need to I need to get out more. I need to change that. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, well, let's get right into this. Today, we're talking about 
travel gear. And I found an article that originally I was going to use for Adventures in the News, but I thought we could just talk about this uh, and do a different one for that. The article is from CBS News, and uh, yeah, I'll put the link in the show notes too. It's the most useful travel products on Amazon under $50. So I want to go through this list with you first. Look at it. I want to get your feedback. We can comment on what we see. Let's describe them, talk about them. And then let's talk a little bit about what we think are for us. The little things, they don't have to be big, but let's let's still stick to that $50 budget. Let's say under $50, okay. things that we think make a big difference when we're traveling. I can do that. Okay, the first one is the Wrangler Wesley rolling duffel bag. Uh, brand, I would say for this brand, it doesn't really matter. No. But, uh, a rolling duffel bag. What do you think? Uh, it's, t- man, for me, I'm not sold on this one. I'm not sold on the rolling duffel bag. I don't see why you wouldn't just use a suitcase or a duffel bag. I feel like you lose the security of a suitcase and the convenience of a duffel bag when you're mm-hmm. using this because you have the soft sided kind of mushy duffel bag, but at the same time you have, or we're going to roll it around. Right. I agree with you on that one. I've had a rolling duffel bag before that I got just for like, I got it at Walmart just to bring like souvenirs and stuff back. And it was not convenient. It wasn't really great. I prefer a real suitcase, uh, but actually I'm mm-hmm. a backpack guy unless I'm actually coming back to America and I'm coming back for like two months. I only carry a backpack. Uh, like yeah. right now for this week in Cambodia, I just have my my computer backpack that I just shove some shirts and stuff in. Um, yep. For me, it depends on the length of time. If I'm going for any longer than a, a couple of days, suitcase all the way. But for like a weekend trip, I'm either a backpack or just a regular duffel bag kind of mm-hmm. guy. Because I like the duffel bag sometimes, but I don't know. Yeah. Suitcase. Suitcase is the way to go. I agree. Although I will say luggage for under $50, that's a pretty good deal because luggage is expensive. Oh, yeah. Good luggage is expensive. It is. For under 50 bucks, I would go nuts for it. $44 if anyone's looking. And comes in one, two, three, four colors. Well, you know what? I I like having luggage in different colors. It makes it so much easier to grab it off of the conveyor belt when it comes out. You know, if you have a black bag, it can be hard to find. If you can, my advice is to not get a black suitcase. And one time I came back to America and I... I just wanted to pack really, really light. So I borrowed my wife's suitcase and she had gotten this. Uh, she actually got it from work, like from a conference or something, which is a really great piece of corporate swag to get from like a pharmaceutical company. A uh, little small, bright, like neon orange hardback suitcase. Man, that thing was so easy to find at the luggage collection. Yeah. It was so great. I just have a I just have a black Samsonite, which is me and everybody else <laughs> on do Earth. Do you do anything to make it easy to find? I have a tag, but sometimes it doesn't. I don't see it. I need to start doing more. I have a black uh, American tourister, but I will tie. Or maybe the same. I have a big black suitcase too, but I tie a big bright green ribbon to the handle. Mm-hmm. It makes it really easy to find. All right. How about this next one? The uh, light. What? How do you? How do you? What? Litomy. 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 Litomy tunnel. Litomy tunnel. Sleep Bluetooth enabled mask and headphones. What's your take on that? I would say. Nah. I was going to say that's too much. I'm going to say I like a mask. I like headphones. They probably don't need to be combined. Not really. And I'm not a mask person. I can't really sleep on planes anyway, so I don't really ever see the point. And I've seen people just like sitting in the airport, like head back with their mask on. And to me, then you, you lose all your situational awareness. Yeah. And I'm like, if you're on the plane, fine, whatever. But you're like in the middle of a crowded space. Yeah, for me, I've gotten better at sleeping on planes, but that's because what I do now is I take some Dramamine and then I order a beer and then I try to sleep as best as I can. Yeah, I have found that two Benadryl and two beers will put you right out. There you go. Yeah, I have worn a mask before and it it actually does help. I don't know why I don't do it more often, but here's my thing. Sometimes I'm there and I'm not really asleep and I'm just chilling. I got my headphones in. I'm listening to music or listening to a podcast or an audio book. What if you have this thing on and then food comes, right? Then your food comes, meal service. You have to stop listening to your audiobook while you eat. You I don't do. want to do that. I don't want to like switch to another Bluetooth device. This thing is very limited. It only works while you're trying to sleep. And that's a yeah. little silly, I would say. Yeah. I think if you're the kind of person that needs like music to fall asleep or white noise or something, it could be very good for you. Yeah. But like for me, I'm not sold on it. You know, Alton Brown always says no mono tools in the kitchen, right? No, no kitchen mm-hmm. tools that are very specific. And I feel like this is the travel version of that. It's a very, very specific thing. And if you need it, it might be great, but I think it's too specific. Yeah, I agree. Do you know what I mean? It's sleep mask with the built-in head with built-in headphones. I think it's too much. That's my take. I don't know. I don't think it's necessary. All right, moving on. We lacks beach blanket. 
I mean, if you're going to the beach, waterproof and sandproof, made from parachute nylon. So it's not it's it's not really a blanket. It's like a tarp. It's not like a beach blanket that you like wrap in, but it's like you put it down and no. you have your picnic on it. it. Comes with securing anchors and a lifetime warranty. Uh, it compresses to only a 16 ounce bag, That's which is cool. very small. Yeah. So I would say uh, you're worth it. Yeah, I like the idea of it. I don't really mm-hmm. go to the beach that often, surprisingly, even no. though I live in Thailand. This could be good for camping as well. Mm-hmm. We can talk about this for a second. I'm I'm not really a beach person. Are you a beach person? I enjoy the beach. I don't want to just like sit there. I want to do things. Like I want to go like kayaking mm-hmm. or take a tour to the islands or something like that. I don't want to just sit in a chair. That's but, true. I, I should rephrase. I'm not a sit on the beach person. Right. I am an ocean person. Yeah, that could just be me. And actually, we can talk about this for a minute too. Speaking of like medical and health things, I officially did get diagnosed with ADHD this week. And so that could just oh, be man. me and my ADHD that I can't just sit still. Explains a lot about the last 30 years. It explains a lot about my schooling. <laughs> it took you this long? Yeah, because well, I was a very quiet, polite kid. But And back in the 90s, ADHD meant you were rowdy and loud and disruptive. That's true. And I wasn't. Okay, we can talk about this for a second. We can get to mental health chat for a okay. second. Why not? Yeah, sure. Well, that's great. It's always good to have a diagnosis, whether or not you were looking for it. I was, because I suspected it. Ever since I learned about like the non-hyperactive type of ADHD yeah. and like that kind of thing, I was like, hmm. Well, because when we were young, it was separated. It was ADD and ADHD. Right. People like my brothers were ADHD, very kind of high energy kind of. Right. I was diagnosed as ADD, which was just, turns out, clinical depression different Mm. thing entirely (laughs) right well back then they didn't really know or they knew but it wasn't really and i was a kid it it gets it's weird as a kid but you know and then i mean am i also probably adhd oh yeah i yeah (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) very much so but have i ever been diagnosed no but you know okay well that that's that's interesting so that also probably explains why i don't want to just like sit on, and i don't like just yes. sitting somewhere either i i feel i'm always fidgeting like i feel like i have mm-hmm. to be active i need to try it i need to try to sit on the beach and read a good book because if i get into something i could be absorbed for a long time too i can fixate on things yeah you you and me are very alike in that and where you yeah. where we we, we hyper fixate <laughs> yeah you find something you like, and that's the only thing in the world for like a month. The two phrases, the the two the two um, symptoms, I guess, that explain everything is hyperfixation and executive dysfunction. I'm like, yep, that's exactly everything I've dealt with my <laughs> entire life. <laughs> that's my that's that's me. <laughs> that could be why I don't want to just like sit on the beach either. Mm-hmm. But I want to take a boat ride. I want to you know go snorkeling, something like that, and that kind of stuff. I love so like being on the ocean. I love it. But just yes. sitting on the beach is not my thing. Maybe we should try it. We need yeah. to try it. Just, just go sit and try to enjoy. Maybe that can be a challenge for me this year. Try to uh, go sit on the just beach. Just sit on a beach. The anti-adventure. Or maybe for some people, it is. We talked about adventures relative. Yeah. It would maybe be really good. Maybe a good practice in mindfulness. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, beach blanket. I'm sold. Yeah. I think it's, it's useful. It, I don't think it's necessary, but it's useful. <laughs> no, but this this thing doesn't say um, necessary travel True. items. This is most useful. And if you're a beach, if you're going to the beach, then yeah, I would say yes. Now this next one, I really like this one: the iWalk Ultra Compact Portable Charger and Power Bank. See, I love my power bank. I I carry it everywhere when I'm traveling. It's really nice mm-hmm. when you're in an airport and you can't find a plug. Power banks are awesome. This one just clips right into the bottom of your phone. It doesn't have any cables. It doesn't have anything extra to carry mm-hmm. around. It kind of just becomes an extension of your phone. That's cool. I like that. Yes, I would agree. And just a power bank in general, ultimate necessity. You need it. I'm actually surprised that they don't make more of them like this, you know, that the other ones mm-hmm. need to have the cable and everything like that. This one has the lightning charger built right in. Where it just clips in. You can hold it with still like your phone. There have been numerous times where it saved me. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, I would have had no phone yeah. in the airport in China. Without my power bank. Yeah, I have a good power bank that gives me at least two charges out of it, and it's so nice. And I just oh yeah, you always need it. Yeah. always so have if you, it. If yeah. you don't have a power bank, give one. I guess the reason that some of them don't have the built-in plug is so that you can charge other devices as well. Mm-hmm. Like mine, mine has two USB things, so I can charge two things at once. This one is only to charge one item at once, right? It's only to charge your phone. So maybe a bit specific, but I love how compact it is, and you don't have to deal with extra cables and all of that. So I, I really like the. 
the way that this one is built. I like the engineering on this one, but yes. maybe not as useful as one that has like two USB outlets or three USB outlets. Yeah, but for the price, what does it say? Twenty thirty three dollars. That's pretty I'm, good. I'm sure you could find ones cheaper than that too. Now, still good. I like it. This next one is JJ Power Travel Shoe Bags. I use Seven Eleven bags for my shoes. Exactly. I was going to say I use Walmart bags. I can see why. Maybe if I was a business person and had nicer shoes. If you're going to a wedding. Yes. Or if you have like nice shoes or whatever. But like for me, you typically bring a a pair of slip-on shoes, an extra pair of shoes, and the shoes I'm wearing. Yeah. That's it. You know me. I exclusively wear Chacos. I haven't worn another pair of shoes since 2018, since I stopped working in an office. I only wear them unless I'm like hiking or something like that. So I'll throw my hiking boots in a bag. Or something, or yeah, maybe a pair of dress shoes. The two times a year I have to wear them. Other than that, I just don't. And, and all those those are rugged hiking boots. They're rugged. It's not going to hurt hurt them to be in a bag. Chacos, same mm-hmm. thing. You know, it's not going to hurt a pair of chacos to be in a grocery bag. Anyway, I would say it's. I'd say skip on that one. Don't need it. Skip it. Now, organizational bags in general can be nice. I do have a good yes, set like of bags clothes like- and things like those are good. Uh, like even those compression bags, those are good. But just something specifically for shoes. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay, this next one is a hood to go portable hood. Stupid. <laughs> it's stupid. It's I just a hood. It's just like a jacket hood, but it's only the hood part. It's a hood that you put on like a backpack. Yes. It's just so you can like put it over your hair. Yeah, which you don't have any. So. <laughs> no, I don't have any. I bust my head. So I have no point. There's no reason for this to exist. My hair dries in like three minutes anyway. And it's nine dollars. Yeah, I, I, I feel like it would make me feel silly. It would make me look silly. And like, I don't care what people think about me. But if it's not useful, if it's not really useful, but then you just feel silly. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I that's hate a it. big skip on. <laughs> I do too. One, one, <laughs> one thousand percent skip. Uh huh. Uh huh. That that one is this, is mm-hmm. absurd. I agree. Okay, this next one is interesting. Neutrogena makeup remover facial cleansing towelettes. Okay. Makeup remover. I don't need it. I don't need it, but like wipes. Yes. Amazing. Exactly. Alcohol. I have alcohol wipes and I have just like refreshing wipes that I keep. Mm -hmm. Alcohol wipes. I like to wipe down the tray because I know they don't clean those things, but just refreshing anything. You know, when you're on a long flight and they bring you like, especially if you're on a nicer airline and they're like right before meal service, when they bring you the warm towel, You know, just to wipe your face with that, it feels so good. I like wipe my whole body down with that. I look disgusting. I just wipe my face and my neck and like my whole arms, but it feels so much better to refresh. And if you have some like cooling, refreshing wipes with you, amazing. In the middle of a long flight, you get up, go to the bathroom, use a couple of those. Yeah. It's just so much better because travel makes you feel gross. It does. You get grimy and greasy. You're always kind of sweaty. Yeah. No matter the temperature, it's you're sweating. Yeah. And it's like, what's yeah. the reason of that? But it's weird because you also get like really dehydrated. So I don't know what the deal is. Mm-hmm. It's dry on those planes. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but for those for those out there that need the makeup remover, I would say probably 100%. Get right. It. For me, that would not be worth the extra price because I'm sure it costs a little bit more. But if you wear makeup, great. By all means, it probably would be nice. Uh, for me, I would just say some regular moist towelettes would be amazing. You need them. All right. I, I like this list because it's, it's um, not so much... It's not out of, it's not crazy. Yeah. Sometimes you get these and they're just weird. It de- well, it depends who you're reading. If you read like travel and leisure, right? That, oh, yeah. that caters to a more upper class client. And believe me, I love travel and leisure. I love browsing through it. It's a fun magazine to read, but you have to admit their clientele travels in a different way than I do. Yeah. <laughs> People see, that's the thing is like, I will say now I love going places i hate traveling yes me too me too and and i'm a traveler i consider myself a world traveler and i get so sick of it now it's not fun anymore i don't like it anymore no like i haven't been on a plane i'm gonna be on a plane for the first time Mm -hmm. since like 2018 in a couple months and and just for like one it's just like the three hour flight and i'm so like not looking forward to it it's just the whole hassle of it but anyway i know what you mean the next one, Perilogic's Universal In-Flight Phone Holder Mount. That's a mouthful. Basically, it's a little mount that clips on your tray table on the plane and holds your phone up. For me, I don't need it because I don't 
actually store any videos on my phone. <laughs> I mean, mm. I have like Netflix and stuff, but I'm not, uh, I use an older phone and it doesn't have that much storage on it. I don't like download stuff to play and to watch. I would just not use this personally. As someone that flies mostly um, domestic flights that has no in-flight entertainment, this would be great for me because I will download a movie or two to watch on a shorter flight. And I usually just hold my phone. My thing with this is that I feel the same way about this as I do the in-flight entertainment. Your neighbor's going to be watching you. And I know that because I watch whatever they're watching. Oh, yeah. Oh, every time. I can't time. help it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sitting here trying to enjoy Jurassic World, and they're watching some crazy show, and I don't know what's going on. But I'm going to watch their show the whole time. So I think I'd rather just hold my phone. But my dad, the dad phone clip that goes on his belt. Right. The belt clip. He takes that whole clip and clips it to his tray table and holds it up. So same thing. Multi-purpose. So I would say if you are a phone watcher on the plane, I'd nice. say it's probably worth it. It's 13 bucks. I'd say it's probably worth it. Here's a question. How do you feel about in-flight entertainment, James, in general? If I am on an international flight, I appreciate it. It's the only time I like, I'm like, ooh, what movies are on? Because I don't really watch movies. The selection is usually pretty decent. It's usually pretty good. I will say there is one surefire way to kill a 15-hour flight. Lord of the Rings Extended Editions. That's 12 hours. You can get through six Star Wars movies. I've done that. I think I watched Phantom Menace twice in a row. Just I love because. the Phantom Menace. Yeah, we've talked about that before. But no, <laughs> it's a great way. But no, I watched like, I watched Matt. That's how I saw Mad Max Fury Road. That's how I saw Jurassic World. All great, good movies. Great airplane movies, especially. Oh, yes. Fury Road is a good movie. Shout out to Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, it's not just a dumb, I mean, it kind of is a dumb popcorn movie, but it's also not. It's also a lot better than just that, too. It's, it's way, it's really know, good. Shout yeah. out to them. If you haven't watched it, just go watch it. It's it's enjoyable. Go watch Fury Road. <laughs> you know, I've been um, a podcast guy. I often listen to podcasts when I'm traveling hmm. or audiobooks, really like audiobooks, especially ones that I I know the story really well and that can kind of lull me to sleep a little bit. Here's yes. a shout out. Speaking of Lord of the Rings, the Lord of the Rings audiobooks are performed by Andy Serkis, who does the yeah, voices so for good. everyone, and he sounds just like the actors in the movie. And it's it's like listening to uh, like a radio play because he does different voices for all of them. He sings all of the songs, and you know, Lord of the Rings has a lot of oh, songs. <laughs> there's a song every three pages. And when I'm reading them, I kind of skip the songs. I'll be honest, but when you're listening to someone singing them, it's a bit different, and it's more enjoyable. So, but something like that, I, I know the story forward and backward. Mm -hmm. I can just put them on and kind of go to sleep. And unless something really shocking happens, like unless he uses his orc voice, which is startling, um, I can just <laughs> I can just lull myself to sleep. See, I drive more than I fly. And so obviously you can't sleep while you're driving. No, you cannot. But you also can't watch movies. No, you can't. If I have someone with me, I typically don't even listen to music. I just like to talk and, you know, joke around. Sometimes music, if you, because there's always that lull period where you, neither of you want to talk anymore. Then you put on some music and you're good to go. But if I'm by myself, I'm a podcast audiobook guy um, while I'm driving. Lord of the Rings are great. Critical Role. Love Critical Role. Um, have you have you listened to any of it? I have not yet, but I'm familiar. It's a D&D &D podcast. It's, right? it's, it's a D&D. &D, it's not as podcast. You, you can listen to it via podcast, but it's, it's a whole phenomenon now. And it's amazing. It's so good. They're on their third campaign. And so there's like, I don't know, I'm campaign one. I, I haven't watched. I started on campaign two because the production quality is way better and things like that. And I think once I get to know the characters and know the people, I'm going to go back. And so I can overlook some of the less than seller production, but it's just a bunch of voice actors playing D and D and they were doing it before they decided to record it. So the first campaign starts in the middle because they were just doing it anyway. It's so good. And I like things that really get your imagination going. Because that's something I feel like as adults we miss out on. Imagination, just play is in that, general fun. Yeah, just and it's so good. It's good for you. It's too. so good. Shout out to Critical Role. Anyway, next one. Next one is earplanes, three pair earplugs. So earplugs. But these are those ones that have the uh, the little tear. They're not just the little foamy ones. They're the ones that have the little like. Um, yeah, they're meant to like equalize pressure and stuff like that. Love them. Use them. They're great. Yeah, I would say that's a great one to have on the list. I would say it's 100% worth it. And they're cheap. They're so cheap. There's no reason not to have them. So this list has some interesting things. What are some things on your personal list 
I have one that I always use now, and that's a pair of compression socks for long travel. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have this experience, but if you're sitting for a long time, you know, your feet can start to swell up. Have you ever had that happen to you? Yes. If I don't get up enough. Yeah. No, I try to get up as much as possible. Even if I don't need to use the bathroom, I'll just get up and go to the bathroom. I'll just go stand in there for like five minutes. Same. Yeah. But compression socks make such a difference. You feel so much better. It relieves any kind of achiness. Uh, You can get them at any pharmacy. You can get them online. Immediately, as soon as I'm on the plane, the compression socks go on, the shoes go off. I actually, speaking of shoes, I have a new a new thing that I've started doing. And uh, this is actually a shout out to uh, Ryan Bergara from BuzzFeed, who I saw on a plane on a flight from Jordan recently. And he was wearing uh, sandals and Crocs. And I was like, man, that's a good idea. I'm going to start doing that. I got my own pair of Crocs to travel. They are the best traveling shoes. They go on and off. There's no laces. There's no straps. Better than Chacos in the airport. Great for being on a plane. So compression socks and Crocs. Again, who cares how you look? You're on an airplane. Oh, no. You can look as stupid as you want. The days of <laughs> looking nice to travel are over. Look, if they're not going to be serving me like w- decent meals on the plane, like have you seen the pictures from the 70s? It's like, yeah, they were pushing around the yeah. cart with like lobster and champagne. Everyone was wearing a suit, but they were getting amazing service. Nowadays, if yeah. you expect me to sit in those little seats... You know, it eh, doesn't matter. No, I'm going to wear what I want. <laughs> I'm going to wear what I want. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to bring whatever food I want on here, which don't do that, by the way. Don't bring tuna. Don't be that guy. <laughs> There's certain foods. Okay, so there are certain foods you don't get on a plane with. One, fish of any kind. Sushi, you can kind of get away with because it doesn't really smell. Two, anything with a lot of onions. I had someone get on the plane with like Whataburger with like extra onions. And I'm like, why would you do that? And three, Chinese food. Anything with a strong smell. Yeah, Don't get on yeah, a plane. Yeah. We're trapped in here with you. If you're bringing your own snacks, what do you bring? Fruit of some kind. I like a good smoothie. You bring it with you or you buy it, you mean? I'll buy it. I'll buy it. with Because you can't bring a smoothie because that's liquid. But if you bring the fruits, it's not a liquid. Figure that one out. Could you argue if you brought a bottle of ice that it's not a liquid? You can bring a peanut butter sandwich, but you can't bring the peanut butter if it's in a jar because that's a liquid. Yes. Apparently. <laughs> Didn't you find that out? My mother did. Yeah. We were oh, traveling yeah. somewhere and she likes to bring like peanut butter and crackers and stuff like that. Cause I think we were going to go hiking or something. And they're like, no, you can't bring that. It's a liquid. <laughs> it's like, it's, but if you clearly... put it on the crackers, it's, it's solid. <laughs> right. It's a gel. I typically don't bring food with me. I'll buy a ridiculously expensive snack at the airport just cause I kind of like it. <laughs> I like those platters that you can get at the airport that have like grapes and little slices of mm-hmm. cheese and crackers, you know, and th- that kind of stuff. But they're like $9. But you could. Yeah, you could make that yourself and bring it. I have before. No problem. It depends on the airport. If there's an Auntie Anne's in the airport, I'm getting a pretzel. It's the only time I ever go to Auntie Anne's. And it's great. <laughs> yeah. What about you? What else do you bring? What makes your travel more oh, man. comfortable? Wipes were a good one. That was a good one for me. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on travel pillows? Do you like the neck pillows? Yeah, I've never had one work for me. I Because of how broad my shoulders are, I try and get the window seat. So I just lean my head against the plane wall. There you go. Yeah. I'm trying to think of things. It's been so long since I usually road trip. I mean, that's travel too. What other, what kind of things make road trips more? Ooh, road trips. Comfortable shoes is a big one. You wouldn't think so, but it's a big deal. Some good sunglasses, reusable water bottle. That's for an airplane too. Bring an empty water bottle. Yeah. And if I don't have one, I just get one at the airport and don't throw it away. Empty it out, go through security, use whatever. It. Use it, fill it up at the water fountain. Mm-hmm. So good. So just good. Do it. Yeah, because I get thirsty on those flights. I get really thirsty. And sometimes if you have like a 1.5 liter of water with you, it's so nice. Man, you it's you feel so much better. It. Yes. With driving, I would say I have more recommendations than things I bring. Like what? If you have to stop for a snack, and as hard as it is, don't act like a like eight year old given fifty dollars. <laughs> you know, it's I love chips and gas station food and stuff like that, but you're just gonna feel like crap. You're going to get like 20 miles down the road and just be like, oh, God, why would I eat those Doritos? Road tripping is interesting because I don't personally have many things that I bring. What about for being in hotels? One little hack I have is depending on the hotel, most of them have, I don't know about like where you are now, but at least in the U.S., the hotels always have new-ish TVs. Yeah, I have a TV. <laughs> <laughs> if the TV, if you bring a laptop with you, bring an HDMI cable. That way you can connect your computer to the TV via the HDMI cable and stream all your shows and stuff through it. 
That sounds more fun than Khmer talk shows. Yes. Um, <laughs> I have like quality of life tips for hotels. One, bring a roll of electrical tape to cover any of those stupid LEDs they like to put everywhere. Oh, that's smart. And just remember to take them off when you leave. Two, like a binder clip, like a bulldog clip kind of thing to hold the curtains together. I mean, the towel underneath the door thing, thats it needs to be dark for me to sleep. And hotels are always 20 times brighter than they should be. Why? In what world were they like, okay, cool. Right above the bed, let's put a smoke alarm with a blinking green LED. <laughs> They're like, that's a great plan. Let's do that. And it's hard enough to sleep in a hotel the first night anyway. So that kind of thing. Um, as for entertainment purposes, the HDMI cable is my mm-hmm. my go-to. Because if you're just, if you're like stuck in a hotel, just chilling, it gets really boring watching whatever they have on TV. Especially if you're in a country where you can't speak the language. I can't watch the office on repeat for seven hours <laughs> speak for yourself james <laughs> no i mean i mean you can't right now <laughs> oh oh i'm not able to yes yes believe me i could watch the office for seven hours do you in the u.s like if you go to a hotel you realize why cable isn't popular anymore because every channel plays the one show like all day long if you're road tripping bring your own pillow feels more comfortable feels more like home yes if you're flying i guess you could you can People do. I'm going to say, if any of our listeners have any ideas, mm. if there's any little gadgets or tools or um, things that you can't travel without, I would love to hear about them. Send us listener mail. Hello at attemptedventure.com. That would be awesome to hear from you guys. Yeah, because I kind of just realized I just sort of suffer through anything. I'm just kind of like, this sucks. And you just get over it, get through it. <laughs> right. But, and this, this list of travel products, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six were good. I mean, it depends on who you are, too. Everyone's different. Everyone has different things that make yes. their life more comfortable. Like some people need that sleep mask. Some people need that sleep mm-hmm. mask with white noise. And you know what? Maybe if I tried it, maybe I'd love it. Maybe I would like sleep the entire flight if I had some white noise on a sleep mask. Maybe it's great. Yeah, I recently learned that iPhones have a white noise generator built into them. Do they? Yeah. Under settings, I don't use this because I don't need white noise to sleep. Let me see. Settings. Um, I forget what it's called. I just discovered this yesterday. Hang on accessibility back oh, background sound just search background sounds oh yeah look at that oh, it's got rain bright noise dark noise ocean rain stream you could just turn on your mm. background sounds on your iphone and put your sleep mask on and maybe it would work great you know i'm not knocking it just not for me interesting well good yeah we'd love to hear from you let us know send us listener mail uh, i'd be very thrilled to hear from you and hear your ideas and advice michael and i travel very similarly mm-hmm. we typically we don't not a lot of frills let me turn off my background for a second, James. Look where, oh, I, where look you at, are. Look at my hotel. This is it. Oh, boy. And this is it. There's the door. The wall is just past the door. It's just this. It's a bed. Can I get a bathroom. room tour? Yeah. Yep. Nice. You can tell it's literally just this. The wall is on the other side of that door. It's probably, I don't know. I'm not good at estimating size. It's very small. There's no frills. This is where I am for this week. This cubicle. <laughs> it doesn't look terrible. It's it looks not cozy. Over. It's fine. And the location's good. It's right near the palace, so I can walk around and and look at the palace. And I'm on the river, so I can walk down the river, go to the old market. Got to find something to do for the rest of this week. So anybody that has any tips, tricks, devices, trinkets, rituals, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, (laughs) Artifacts? Anything. Anything to make your travels more comfortable, let us know. Well, it's time for our favorite segment, Adventures in the News. Originally, I was thinking about using this article for that, but I do have another one. Um, The article itself is not what I'm going to talk about. It's about a travel writing festival. But the theme of the festival is what I want to talk about. So here it is. The theme of this year's Sherborne Travel Writing Festival is travel is medicine. And I just wanted to discuss that with you. What do you think about that idea? Travel is medicine. That's an interesting one. I agree. And I agree that traveling can really change how people perceive the world and perceive other people perceive things like that. And so I would, I would agree with that. You know, I think that the issue for me comes when people, I feel like the people that would benefit the most from traveling are the people that are the least able to do so. Right. Or who simply don't, who don't want to see the world and maybe won't, you know, they refuse and the people that would benefit the most Right. Because we've talked about this. Traveling doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of money and go very far. It could just be going to another city or, or, you know, visiting a mosque or going to a cultural festival or something like that. Right. The people that would benefit from it 
like you said, often won't. There, there's that great quote by Mark Twain, right? Travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness, and many of our people need it sorely on these accounts. I was about to say that, and it's true. I love that quote. And I, I believe it's true. Oh, I do too. I do too. Um, but no, so I, w- I would say so. I would say that travel can be very good for not only mental health, but perhaps physical health, perhaps emotional oh, yeah. health. So that's interesting. What are your thoughts on it? I agree completely, uh, especially if you yeah, mental and emotional health. I mean, physical health, too. When I'm traveling, I walk a lot more than when I'm just home. So there's that, first of all. But yeah, mental health, just a change of scenery can be really nice. Emotional growth, like like we mentioned, getting to be around people from other countries and other cultures and broadening your mind and learning about different people and different ways of life. Right. And learning that ultimately we're all just people. We all want the same thing in this life. And that's what I have said would also probably be the death of prejudice is is when people finally realize that every single person on this on this earth wants the same things. We're all just people. We're all people. We all want security, safety for our family, mm-hmm. f- food on our plate. We all want the same exact things in different ways. And that thing that may mean different things to different people based on the culture you grew up in. And granted, not everyone would have that same reaction. Some people are just unhelpable. Well, true. (laughs) But we're not going to talk about them. No. I am of the mind that most issues like that stem from ignorance. If you lose that ignorance and are willfully still doing that, then that's another issue entirely. And I don't know what to do at that point. But most, most of the, those kind of issues, I believe, are stem from ignorance and that that doesn't excuse them, but it does open it to teaching. It's a tough, it's a tough subject. And travel is often seen as a very privileged thing. And in a way it can be. It can be, but in the context of this show, we don't talk about travel and adventure as being a luxurious thing. We, we talk about go to the, you know, the Greek food festival in your hometown, right? It doesn't have to be a privilege. Exactly. You know, I think, for us, that's a great thing because we we define it differently than I think a lot of people think of it because I can't go jet off to Greece. I can go to the town over and see what's going on. Right. So, yeah, that's that's interesting. And I think we'll link that article because I've been skimming it a little bit. And it's really interesting. It's more about travel literature. So even if you mm-hmm. can't travel, right? Again, you can you can learn about these other places through reading as well. Why travel literature still has an important role to play despite the climate crisis and hardening of borders. And I do think that's valuable too. I think I agree. That's interesting. We'll we'll definitely put a link to that. All right, folks. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. Uh, Again, you can send listener mail along with uh, comments on this episode or just episode ideas, topic ideas to hello at attemptadventure.com. We would love to hear from you. Find show notes along with photographs of of the things we've talked about, attemptadventure.com. Find us on Facebook and Instagram at attemptadventure. You can find us on YouTube. If you want to just listen to the episodes, it's YouTube at Attempt Adventure Podcast. And if you want to see our videos, vlogs, bonus content, geography games, etc., head on over to at Attempt Adventure. You can find it there. Again, check out our Ko-fi page if you want to support the show. A little bit would go a long way. And again, if you don't mind, leave us a review. We'd love it. We'd love to hear what you guys think about the show. And it really does help us make a better podcast for all of you. Again, thanks for listening. We'll be back next time with another great topic. And until then, keep adventuring. Keep adventuring.